Okay, so first of all, I'm going to type one, one, one in here and then do equals this cell plus one and enter and then drag this down. And this works because every formula is linking to three cells above and then adding one to it. So here we're doing one plus one, which makes two. And then here we're doing two plus one, which makes three. Then another option is to type one in here, then leave two cells blank and type two. Then select all of this, including two cells underneath the number two, and then click and drag this down. And Excel's autofill will add in the numbers here. Then to fill in the blanks, go to home and find and select and then go to special and then select just the blanks and OK. And then do equals and select the cell above. Then to copy this formula into all the other selected cells, we'll use the keyboard shortcut Control Enter. And then I have repeating numbers where the first number is an actual number and all of the others are formulas linking to the cell above. Then another option is to type the number one in here and then do equals this cell here and then equals and select the cell above again and enter. Then select all three of these cells and click and drag down. And this gives you the same results as this column here with the first number being an actual number and then all of the other numbers being references to the cell above. If you want to get rid of the formulas, you can select the column and right click and copy and then right click and paste as values. And that turns all of the numbers into actual numbers. Another option is to type the number one in here and then select this cell, hold down control on the keyboard and drag down and this counts up the numbers. Then release control on the keyboard and the mouse button. Then press control on the keyboard for a second time and continue dragging down. And this time it will copy the numbers from one to five downwards. It's a little bit counterintuitive because the keyboard shortcut control is doing different things each time, but it does work. Then you can right click and go to sort, sort smallest to largest. It will ask me if I want to expand the selection to also sort these columns as well, but I don't want to do that. So I'll select continue with the current selection and sort. The next option involves typing the numbers one, 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 then doing equals if, this number here is equal to this number here. Then give me this number here plus one. And if not, give me just this number here. And this formula works because here we're testing to see if this number is equal to this number and it isn't. So we just copy this number here, which is the number two. And then here we're testing if this number here is equal to this number here and it is. So we do this number here plus one, which gets me three. You just have to make sure that the two cells that you are comparing are far enough apart that you get the numbers to repeat as many times as you want them to. The next option involves using the row formula. So the row formula, if you put a cell reference in it, will give you the row number of that cell reference. So here I'm putting in the cell reference A1 and that will get me the row number one. And then if I send this formula down, it counts up by one each time as the cell reference moves down by one each time. Now I need for these numbers to start at zero. So I'm going to subtract one from this and then double click to send it down. Then I am going to do this number divided by three as I want to have numbers repeating three times. 
then I will use the integer formula, which rounds a number down to the nearest integer. And integer is just another name for whole number. And so here you see that 0 and 1 stay the same because they're both already whole numbers, but these two numbers here get rounded down to 0. And then these two numbers here get rounded down to the nearest whole number, the number 1. So now I just need to take this and add 1 to it. And then we get this same pattern of repeating numbers as before. Now you have to have the numbers starting from 0 because if I get rid of the minus 1 here, you then have just these two numbers here being rounded down to 0 and then the third number is the number 1 and so that just stays as the number 1. So you have only two repeats here and then three repeats for everything else. So this here needs to have a minus 1. Now I'm going to put all of this into one column. So first of all, I'll put this in brackets and divide it by 3. And then put the integer formula around this, making sure to add in another set of open brackets here. And then close the brackets at the end and then add 1 to this. Now there are multiple different options for the inner part of this formula. For example, I can use the row formula with nothing in it, and that will just give me the row number of the cell that I am currently in. So that gets me the number 2 here. I need for this to start at 0, so I have to subtract 2 from this and then the rest of the formula is the same. Another option is to use the rows formula. So this formula takes two cell references with a colon in between and then counts the number of rows between these two references. I'm going to press F4 on the keyboard to put the dollar signs around the first cell reference in order to make it an absolute cell reference so it doesn't change as I drag the formula down. Then when I send this down, you can see that it counts up by one each time as the first cell reference stays the same, but the second one changes, so the range expands by one row each time. I then need to subtract 1 from this, and the rest of the formula is the same as before. So we need to put the integer formula, two open brackets, and then we have a close brackets divided by three close brackets, and then plus 1, and enter, and then double click to send this down. Then you can also use the sequence formula. The sequence formula is only available in the newer versions of Microsoft Excel, but if you have the sequence formula, you can put the number 15 in here and it will give you a sequence of numbers from 1 to 15. And then subtracting 1 from this will get you numbers going from 0 to 14. There are also a couple of other different ways to write this. So if we have 15 rows in here, we can have one column and then a start of zero and a step of one, and that will also get you the same numbers. As you have 15 rows here and one column, you're starting at zero and you have a step of one, so you're increasing by one each time. Then, because the number of columns is by default one, you don't actually need to put this number in here, and also the step by default is one, so you don't have to include this either, and you will still get these same results. And then you would wrap the integer formula around this, just like we did for the row formulas. However, you can also have a step here of one third, and that will get you numbers like this. And we can now wrap the integer formula around this without having to divide it by 3. And then add 1 onto the end. Then in addition to there being multiple different options for the inner part of the formula, there are also multiple options for the outer part of the formula as well. I can 
use the quotient formula and this returns the integer portion of a division. So this part here is the numerator and then the denominator is 3. And so it takes this part here and divides it by 3 and then it takes just the whole number part of that result. So it gets us the same results as the integer formula. And then we need to add one onto the end of this. Another option is to use the round up formula. And as we are rounding up in this case, we can actually start at the number one. And then I will divide this by three and then put the round up formula around this and it will round this number up and then the number of digits is the number of digits after the decimal point and as I want whole numbers I don't want any numbers after the decimal point so I'm just going to put zero in here and then close brackets and control enter. Then the opposite of the round up formula is the round down formula. And as we are rounding down in this case, we do need to subtract 1 to start at 0. And then put all of this into brackets and divide it by 3. And then put the round down formula around this, making sure to add in another set of open brackets here. Then the number of digits is again zero and close brackets and enter and then double click to send this down. And then we're beginning from zero again in this case. So we have to add one onto the end. Now the round up formula is nice and short in comparison to the round down formula because in order to get the round down formula to work, you have to minus one here and then add one here. Then another option is to use the ceiling formula. And in this case, we will be rounding up again. So we don't need to start at zero, we can start at one. And then we need to divide this by three and then wrap the ceiling formula around it. Now there are two versions of the ceiling formula. There's an older version which rounds a number up to the nearest multiple of significance and then a newer version which rounds a number up to the nearest integer or the nearest multiple of significance. And as we want the nearest integer, I'm going to use ceiling math. And then this here is the number and the significance is optional. And if we don't include it, it will just round up to the nearest whole number. So I can just do enter now and double click to send it down and I get my pattern of repeating numbers. Then the opposite of the ceiling formula is the floor formula. And in this case, we will be rounding down again. So we need to start at zero. And then we'll put this in brackets and divide it by three and then put the floor formula around this and I'll be using floor math and make sure to include a, another open brackets here and again I don't need to include the significance so I can just close brackets and then control enter and then in this case we need to add one to the end and you can use any combination of the inner formulas and the outer formulas in order to get repeating numbers. Now I'm just going to quickly show you a couple of different options. So at the moment we have the number repeating three times before it changes. But if you wanted it to repeat a different number of times, say you wanted it to repeat four times, you would need to change the number here from three to four and then you would get the number repeating four times. If you want the number to repeat five times, then you need the number five here. And then we get five ones and five twos and five threes. 
then you can also change the step. So at the moment we have a step of one, it's increasing by one each time, but you can change this. The easiest way of doing this is if you start at zero, so I'm going to get rid of the plus one here. And then in order to get a step of two, I'm going to times all of this by two. And this makes it so it increases by two each time. Then you can also change the start number by adding on whatever number you want to start at. So say if I wanted to start at the number 10, then I would add 10 to the end of this. And it's still increasing by two each time. And this works because of the order of operations, it does the multiplication part first and then the addition part afterwards. You can put brackets in here if you want, but it's not going to change the calculation. So here I now have the number repeating three times, a step of two and a start number of ten. And this will work for all of the other formulas as well. And you can modify these numbers to get whatever pattern of repeating numbers you want. OK, so in this video, I have shown you how to get repeating numbers in Excel. And that is everything.